Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt Naylor. Uh, this is going to be kind of nerdy, but I don't really care because if you're watching this, you're probably a nerd too. Um, the other day I fell down a YouTube rabbit hole and there were a lot of horror movie collections on there that I got sucked into watching. I didn't notice a lot of Phantasm collections, so I wanted to make a video real quick and showcase some of the Phantasm stuff I have. And if you guys have any stuff, I'd love to uh, see it or hear about it. So here we go. I'll uh, start off with the Phantasm Mondo. Uh, the first Phantasm Mondo print they made. They had the cast sign that. Um, and there's an 8x10 signed by Angus. I'll move up by here. This is kind of rare, I guess. It's a Phantasm Beta tape. A lot of you guys probably don't even know what beta is, but it was before VHS. It's just a little bit smaller. Next, I have the Phantasm Mondo Christmas ornament. Um, this is actually a rock from the Red Planet when I went to California. This mug is kind of cool. It actually just, when it gets hot liquid in it, it says Morningside. Uh, mortuary service and that's got a picture of Dunn's mirror um, next I, it's kind of dark I'm sorry got a phantasm clock there Scott Penza's coin which I recently got this thing is awesome I didn't expect it to be such good quality um, thanks Scott I appreciate that next to that I have a Mondo pen got this uh, 71 CUDA model. I'm not big into car models, but I put this thing together. It sucked. I don't know who does that for fun. I almost smashed it about four times, but I think it turned out okay. Uh, whatever. And I've got the box sets. Of course, there's going to be more coming out. I'm going to have to get those as well. Uh, Angus signed Spear. I love this piece right here. I've been looking for one of these for a long time. It's a Tall Man's Dagger. It's the exact model that he used in Phantasm 1 and 4. Uh, I believe it's a German dagger. I found it online. Thanks to uh, pictures in Dustin McNeil's book, I was able to find the exact model. Over here is another sphere. I'm not sure exactly where this came from. It may have come from Nightmares Unlimited. I don't know for sure. Um, whoever it came from did a really good job. It's got a lot of weight to it. Very durable. Uh, let's see up here. I've got a cutout from a, a company called Knee High Horror. Uh, they'll do pretty much any horror film that you want. And he just had a Phantasm 2 on his table. So I picked that up. Above that is a Phantasm Mondo poster, the white room. There's the box, Phantasm Cuda. Uh, kind of bothers me because the interior is white and in the film it's black, whatever. This piece I uh, recently acquired um, off of eBay. The seller actually worked on the Phantasm sequels 2, 3, and 4, and she acquired this in 1980. It's from a company called Arquin Studios, which is no longer in business. It's a latex mask. It's as hard as a rock, so uh, it's a little misshapen as well. I want to try to get it reformed and possibly foam fitted so I can preserve it. I love that. I don't know if there's another one anywhere else. Uh, I don't know if that's the only one left in existence. If anyone's ever seen this co this model, not this copy, but uh, if anyone has seen an Arquin Studios Tall Man mask, please let me know in the comments. Next up is the uh, Stephen Romano Phantasm comic book signed by uh, Don Coscarelli and Reggie. 
I think these are still available on their website. It's actually a really good story. I read it once, put it back in the board and bag. Of course, I had to get an open uh, tall man and minion so I could display them. There's a couple other guys. Dr. Loomis, Michael, Leatherface. Uh, let's see. Next up, we've got a Phantasm Three: Lord of the Dead uh, original movie poster. I recently got this. I love the cover of that. A lot of color. Angus's face with that uh, creepy eye looking at you. Right in front of that, I've got a Tall Man bust. This is from a company called Rebel Resins, I believe. I'll send. I'll put the link in the video. Um, this is as raw as it comes. I didn't paint it. I haven't glued it. I don't want to mess it up. It actually has forks um, that you're supposed to glue in the sphere. I have them on the shelf behind me. I'm not trying to screw it up, so uh, I'm going to leave it like that for now. It sits on this base. I found the base at a uh, thrift store. It looks remarkably like the statue bases um, from Morningside, so I picked it up. I think it looks good. When I do paint it, I'll probably end up painting it white so it matches the base and leave it as that. I uh, recently got this Minion Bust. I love it. I don't know what the company is that um, made this, but I'll look it up and I will put the link in the description. Behind here is a poster. It's kind of hard to see. I apologize for the crappy lighting. It was a commission piece that a group of people went in together, and uh, I think there was only, I don't know, 50 or so people that actually um, put in for this. So these, these are very limited. I can't pull it out right now because I only have one hand. You see the, uh, the morning side gates, and you see Mike standing there, and if I pulled poster up you can see a step uh, a shadow of the tall man standing below Mike really cool oh next up I've got Mondo really screwed me here because they came out with these records right well they came out with probably I don't know six different versions of the same damn record so I had to buy every single one uh, One's silver, one's marble, one's black, one's gray with red on it, one's yellow with red, blah, 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 whatever. I had to buy every single one. Uh, this thing, I didn't even know what this was. RCA video disc. It's not a laser disc. It's a video disc. So this thing is plastic. Um, it goes in a, in a player like this. I think it may be the other way. And it spits the disc out um, then spits this plastic case back out. I had no idea what these even were. I just saw it on eBay, picked it up. I love the original artwork, obviously. And the, uh, the artwork on the back is pretty great, too. And I found that as I was looking for laser discs. I went laser disc crazy. I don't even have a laser disc player, but I also have to have these too. So I got all of the Phantasm laser discs. One, two, uh, three, Lord of the Dead, and finally Oblivion. All right, so next up I have a VHS collection, obviously. Um, Phantasm one through four. They didn't release Ravager on VHS. There was a company that did it as kind of a novelty, but it was never officially released on VHS. So I may pick that up. I don't know. Uh, Kenny and Company. You could never find a VHS copy of that. If you've never seen Kenny and Company and you're a fan of Phantasm, you need to see it. The same guy did the soundtrack, Fred Myro. Half the cast is in it. It's an excellent film by Don Coscarelli. 
Next up, the DVD Blu-ray uh, portion. Uh, there's the Master of Horror that uh, Coscarelli did, Bubba Hotep, blah, blah, blah. And the Phantasm 1 through 4. Um, and then the Blu-rays. All right, next up is a, uh, a mini poster that I got for the 30th anniversary of Phantasm, signed by the cast. Um, it's all personalized. People have different opinions on personalized things, so I did get some things personalized, and I got some things that weren't personalized for if I ever have kids, or it's unlikely if I ever sell any of my collection. Next up, this thing is really cool. I found this on eBay. It's actually a Phantasm 2 3D poster. It's a quad poster, so there's there's four different sides to it. Uh, and on the back side, it shows a... Uh, I think it's actually this picture, just really big, and it's not in 3D. And I've got a, I believe, Mexican... Phantasm poster. Uh, I don't know. That looks like Spanish. If any of you can tell me. Um, and then I've also got a small press kit for Phantasm 2. Next up, I've got the Phantasm authorized film com uh, companion. I haven't read this yet. Well, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Next up, uh, Phantasm Exhumed from Dustin McNeil. This book is awesome. I've read it probably four times, and every time I read it, I find something new in it. He actually released that one and the Red Planet Edition. Again, I'm sorry for the crappy lighting, but um, the Red Planet Edition actually has the color photos um, when I met Angus I've only met him maybe a handful of times six or seven times this book was on his uh, table and he said that he liked this book the best because there was a picture in in here that he really loved and I'm assuming that it's a picture with him and his uh, dogs. If you're a fan of Phantasm, pick the book up. Do yourself a favor. All right, lastly, I don't keep this in the horror film room. I keep this locked up, but this is the exact uh, Remington 870 shotgun that Jody uses in the film. Um, the cool thing about this shotgun is it belonged to an Oregon State uh, trooper, which is kind of cool because if you know about Phantasm, you know that the fictional town that the original Phantasm took place in was in Oregon. And you can see that um, by looking at the CUDA's license plate, their Oregon plates. And of course, underneath there is a blanket that my mom made for me for Christmas one year. Uh, it is very similar to the uh, blanket that Mike uses in Phantasm 1 and then again it pops up in Phantasm Ravager uh, when Reggie is in Dawn's cabin. 